Hello and welcome to Lesson 4. I'm Larry Lormond, Minister of Education and Administration at Ash Creek Baptist Church. I'm glad that you're with me today. We are moving through these lessons on prayer. And um, today's lesson is uh, especially important. A uh, little bit depressing, but a uh, powerful lesson. Uh, the lesson title is When We Don't Know What to Pray. Um, I'm not sure that title articulates particularly um, what it wants to. It's not that we don't know what to pray for. It's just we're so emotional about it that it's hard to articulate it. And uh, it's just so bottled up and... It's emotional and it's hard uh, that you're so stricken by it that the words just don't seem to want to come out. And uh, if you're a believer, uh, you're not going to be excluded from those types of days. Uh, he's just going to carry you through it. And that's really what the lesson is about. We are in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27, which is a very powerful huge, important chapter in Romans. The main idea of the lesson today is sometimes we're so burdened about something that the only thing that comes out in our prayer is a groan. And underline that word groan because you're gonna, we're going to see it in another place in Romans um, here in a moment. But uh, burden, wow. Have you been there? I've been there several times. Hope I don't go there again anytime soon. Uh, but the quick read, uh, when we are weak in prayer, the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. It's such an important doctrine that we're going to talk about today that there are times where the Holy Spirit just comes alongside us and props us up uh, physically and mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Uh, he knows us so well that he knows where we're at, and he knows what we need. And even when you don't even know how to articulate it, he helps us. And that's such an important thing. You're just never going to be alone. He's with you all the time. So let's introduce the lesson. Uh, kind of lay a foundation about how to think about this, this lesson. Uh, first thing I put on paper is this lesson acknowledges that there are times where we're under such a burden that we can't even utter a prayer and it's a real thing um, you would think that uh, if you're there you um, prayer would be the, the, the most basic thing you do but there are times where it's so difficult and you're so hurt and so burdened by it that you don't even know how to put it into words and the lesson says that God just comes alongside us by the person of the Spirit, and He helps us. The Spirit within us helps us to, to pray to the Father and ask for the things that we need. So, um, man, how comforting is that? Uh, in your greatest day of need, the Spirit knows what you need. And so, you know... I thought I'd take just a moment and articulate my thoughts on the Holy Spirit. Man, the church has wrestled for 2,000 years with this whole concept of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's not something that's easy to articulate and easy to understand. It's kind of a thing that we know it's real, but how do you explain it? Um, and so here's my stab at it. Uh, here's... Uh, just some thoughts that I have about the Holy Spirit. So, here we go. John 14, where Jesus is, he's getting ready to leave. And he's not concerned about himself, he's concerned about his disciples. And he is uh, sharing some important things with them. First thing he says, in my Father's house are many dwelling places. Um, you're going to live with me. And I'm going to come back for you. I'm not going to leave you alone. And so he... One of the things he says, he talks about heaven, but he talks about the Holy Spirit. You know, you're going to a place that's wonderful, but until you get there, I'm going to give you the advocate, uh, the, the uh, helper. 
And he actually calls him the advocate there. He says, and he will advocate for you. A person who advocates is not doing it for himself. He's doing it for someone else. So the Spirit moves into our life and advocates for us to the Father. And Jesus said he will help you and be with you forever. Uh, Ephesians 4.30 says that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now, a seal was a symbol, okay? Uh, if you sent a letter and you were an important magistrate or king or person, you'd roll the scroll up, you'd put a piece of wax on the, where the seal came together, the document, you'd put that wax on there, and then you'd take your signet ring and you would stick your symbol in that wax. And only the person of, of authority uh, could break that seal and read that document. The messenger couldn't do it. Uh, anybody who handled the document couldn't do it. Only the person that was designated. And it was a symbol of the authority. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is God's seal. It's His symbol in our life that shows us that we are owned by Him. And it's forever. Okay, We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. I believe that the Holy Spirit is the very presence of God that comes into our life when we accept Jesus. And it permeates, He permeates all of our life. You know, we, we tend to talk about the Holy, you know, God coming into our heart. And that's, you know, like right here. Um, I think a better word is our life. And I try to say it like that and articulate what happens. You know, the heart is hidden. And it's intimate, and, it, and he certainly does that, but he, he comes into our life and that it permeates. He permeates every part of it. Uh, my work, my family, my marriage, my relationship to my children and my grandchildren, all of my life, he comes into it, okay? And so um, it's the presence of God, and that's I, who I think uh, the Holy Spirit is. The Bible says and articulates it like he's the third person of the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When Jesus was baptized, the Father spoke and the symbol showed up in the, in the form of a dove. And so we know it's real, but the Bible says he's like a person. Okay, uh, He's not just this entity out here. He's a person. Um he can grieve. We can grieve the Holy Spirit by our actions and by our decisions. People grieve. Um, he speaks, uh, it says in Hebrews 3, 7. And today's lesson uh, says he has a mind. He has a mind. So this is a person. This is not a thing. Okay? So he's the third person of the Trinity. Um, remember also as we get ready for this lesson, if, I'd say go read Romans 8. And what you're going to find is that the first part of Romans 8 talks about how the world is broken. Um, when Adam and Eve sinned, uh, all of God's creation became broken. Uh, the guilty became broken. Adam and Eve became broken. Their relationship to God was broken. Their relationship to, to each other was broken. And that Adam blamed Eve, okay? And so their marriage changed because of sin and became broken. And we've all inherited that. We have that sin nature. But innocent things also became broken, okay? Like creation. I mean, creation didn't have anything to do with Adam and Eve's sin, but they were affected by it. And sin always affects innocent people and things. It's beautiful in that the Bible personifies nature and says even nature groans waiting for the day of redemption like a person would. It knows that it's broken. And even nature dies. Everything dies. I was uh, at my other uh, house that I inherited down in southeast Texas a couple weeks ago. And a big, beautiful tree just died. And it's like, why did that thing die? The dirt around it is is, is uh, beautiful black dirt. 
And it's on the edge of a marsh. It has plenty of water, but it died. I guess it was this time. It died, and I had to get out there with my chainsaw and cut this big old tree down and pray the thing didn't fall on the barn. And now I've got this big old tree to cut up and throw in the swamp out there. But it died. All of creation dies. So uh, it, it's saying, you know, the context is that we live in a broken world, and even Christians are going to have experiences that are difficult because that's how the world is. My mom died at 37. How do you explain that? That's just not right. Um, it happened because we live in a world where uh, bad things happen to really great people. The world is broken. Uh, that After that, we're going to read that beautiful passage that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Not everything is good. Uh, God hasn't fixed every problem just yet, but that day is coming. But he can use all things to his glory if we allow him. That's part of the problem is we still have free will and we get in his way a lot of the time. So they're still suffering, and uh, but the Spirit has come into our life to uh, be our advocate and help us on those very difficult days. Uh, so we always need to read the context of what's going on. Now, I divided this this little short passage up, up into three sections. The first one, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. It actually says that. Okay. Second thing is the Spirit interprets our message. Okay. And uh, the third part is God knows the mind of the Spirit. So let's look at it. 26a. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. There are times where you're just going to be so weak you're not going to know what to do. You're not even going to know what to say. You're not even going to be able to pray. Been there. Done that. It's real. Uh, but on that day, the Spirit is going to help us in our weakness. You're not going to be alone. He's going to help you. Some of you out there today are struggling. God knows. He knows where you're at. He knows what you need. And His Spirit stands ready to help you. Let Him help you. Okay? So, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. You're going to be weak. You're going to have days that are hard. Don't be surprised. Prepare yourself mentally and spiritually for that day. Now, while you're strong, okay? Don't live in denial like, oh, that day is never going to happen. Yeah, it will. It will. If you live long enough, you're going to experience some stuff that's difficult. It's just part of being in a broken world. So, look at the second part of this verse. We do not know what we ought to pray for. Hmm. Sometimes when you're in that place, you don't even know how to say it but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans it's like the spirit within us knows us so intimately that he 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 is very in tune with where we're at and what we need and he is sizing us up today or in, in our day of weakness and our day of, uh, of great pain. And he knows exactly uh, what we feel. And you know, that's the great thing about God. He's omniscient. He knows everything. Uh, he knows what I need before I even ask it. And part of how he knows today is through the great work of the Spirit within us. So he, he, is, he's, he knows where we're at. And he knows what we need. So he's going to be our helper uh, when we're there. So I love this last part of this passage. So that, you know, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. And he interprets our message. He's our, our speaker on that day. Okay. Look at the last part of this. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Now, this to me is an interesting passage. Now, Wesley may interpret it 
differently in our workers meeting and sometimes that happens sometimes we have not very often but sometimes um he has a different understanding of it than me of the passage but this is how i, I read this it's like the Spirit of God lives within us, and the Spirit of God is constantly looking at our heart and interpreting our need and sizing up our situation. And then when the Father comes to us, He's constantly looking at us. His back is never to us. His face is always towards us. So when the Father comes to us, He... he hears what the Spirit says our need is. So two persons of the Trinity are aware of what's going on with us. It's like the Spirit knows my heart because He's within me and He knows me. He knows what's going on with me. So when God is looking at me, the Spirit communicates to the Father on my behalf. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Let's read it again. And he who searches our hearts, I think that's the Father, knows the mind of the Spirit, and the Spirit that's within us. That's how I interpret that. That's how I see it. Now, maybe I'll change my mind tomorrow. But today, that's how I read it. So the Father who searches our hearts, he's always looking at us knows the mind of the Spirit. And so, because the Father knows the mind of the Spirit that's within us, He's always aware of what we really need. And He's always looking to help us. Isn't that a powerful thing? He says, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so, let's, let's kind of park this and I, once again, have three truths. Let me share this with you. This is kind of what it shook down for me, as far as the real truths of the lesson. First things, there are things that we experience in this life that are so difficult that we don't even know how to articulate them to the Lord when we pray. Um, yeah. We have our days like that, our times like that. Praise the Lord, they're few. It's not like that all the time because He rescues us. Um, I pray for you today if you're there. I, I hope you're not. But we will all experience these things. We live in a broken world. It's going to happen. Uh, don't live in denial that nothing ever terrible is going to happen to you because it will. Yeah, it will. Second thing, the Lord knows us through the Spirit so intimately. Man, He knows us. That He knows what we need, and He knows what we're feeling, even when we're so broken that we can't speak. God's Spirit within us knows what we, where we're at. And God the Father is always in contact with His Spirit. So He knows. The last thing is, ultimately... Uh, our prayers should be for the Lord's will to be done, which is always the best. You know, if you if you prayers for God's will, then God's always going to answer your prayer, yes. Now, I've said it before. God always answers the prayer of His children. Uh, if you're a believer and you're His child, He's always going to answer you. It's either going to be yes, no, or wait. I don't like the wait. Do you? We need to... Learn patience, don't we? Well, um, if you ask according to his will, it's always going to be yes. And it's always going to be the best thing for you. So let's ask according to his will. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We love each other. It is so comforting, Lord, to know that your spirit lives within us. And one of the most basic things he does is help us. And you're not going to leave us alone. You're with us through your spirit. And I thank you that you, Father, are always searching our hearts. And you're knowing our minds through the work of the spirit. And you're ready and able and willing to do your great work. So, Lord, fill us with your spirit.
pray we'd all be filled. In your name I pray. Amen. You have a great week. God bless you.